Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amabad. Today's video is regarding 1,000 days, no alcohol. Walhamdulillah. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, right into it, good folk. I am not speaking as somebody who is counting, I know that sounds ironic, but somebody who is not in like AA or really had an issue with alcohol in the past. Although like I say in, in past videos, many of my friends and family certainly have, and at a very minimum, it being so embedded into English culture, I grew up around copious amounts of alcohol consumption. And although I, you know, did partake, it was never something that I wasn't really like a big kind of going out drinking party type person. Like I say, I did do it. But so this isn't like I'm an alcoholic. I'm somebody who's looking for, you know, praise in relation to this. But what it is, is a statement because I know many people do. I have seen the effects of alcohol in particular, because that's what the video is about on individuals, in the community, in my own life, and it's very sad. And this is one thing that, you know, people with any reasonable view on the world will commend Islam for, that it protects the intellect, it protects the family, it protects the individual, it protects society at large by making sure we don't get engulfed in debt, in riba, in interest, in gambling, in drugs and alcohol and sexual immorality, fornication, etc. And these are just absolutely no-brainers in a historical context. This was commonplace amongst people of intellect. And I wanted to just get right into it. Alcohol is a poison, quite literally. And if people are able, I guess, to manage their alcohol consumption then it's not a big deal. It's something they can incorporate into their lives and may see some benefit from socially, personally, emotionally. But this is accepted in Islam. There is some benefit to, for example, alcohol, but the negative outweighs the benefit. The negative outweighs the positive. And as a result, on an individual level and on a macro level, it's best to abstain. So this has been one of the kind of benefits to embracing Islam, although it's certainly way down the list, but something I felt would attract some attention because it's quite unique. And having 1,000 days, no alcohol under my belt and looking really towards 10,000 days. I mean, what is this approximately? We are talking about, you know, if there's 300 approximately, 1,000 days being approximately three years. You are talking about 30 years, a lifetime. That's really what I'm aiming for. Not what can I, where can I be in another 1,000 days, 5,000 days, 10,000 days playing the long game. And that is the essence of these videos in this channel. I thought if I consistently release videos and talk to the online community and start to plant seeds and build relations and try and give some dawah, then the possibilities are endless. Where could a brother be in one year, five years, 10 years? in relation to making an impact and helping people's lives. I would call all people to abstain from alcohol, to help those in their circle, in their family, in their friendship group, in society at large, because it might not be you, as me, like I'm an example. It's not me who struggled with alcohol. Alcohol blackouts, alcohol violence and rage, alcohol sexual immorality, alcohol as a crux, uh, a crutch as a means to get over the existential crisis present in people's lives to get over the reality of hardship in life. No, that wasn't me. Now, at times you can see it developing. You have a couple of beers after work and you do it day after day and it becomes such an ingrained habit. You start to now become actually quite malevolent. If that thing is taken away from you, you start to be you get this kind of this spirit, this kind of quite narcissistic, insidious spirit overtakes. And if somebody takes what is yours, you become quite aggressive. It's it's very sad. It's a real shame. 
I mean, my my grandmother, uh, may Allah preserve her, still alive now, lives in Tenerife. Her second husband died of alcohol poisoning. He almost took her with her. Alcoholics are commonplace in our society, function alcoholics. And I guess I wanted to just put this out there. Something that is linked to Islam, of course, but and certainly sociologically, if you go anywhere, even small towns where I'm from, Aylesbury, Buckingham, but certainly up here in Manchester, it only takes to be walking around on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning in town to just see the debris, the litter, the people literally passed out on the street. It's a sad sight to see. These are not people who are being all that they can be. Maybe these are people that are burying their head in the sand and not really grasping the true nature and importance of the life that we have in this world and reality at large. And so what did I do to first start um, my journey of no alcohol and then that went on to no drugs and beyond? It was before I embraced Islam, quite a while before I embraced Islam. I actually did it for charity and I encourage people to do this. If you are struggling with something, then do a 30 days or 100 days no alcohol and do a just giving page and raise money at the time my mother's partner was terminal with a cancer. And so I did it for Macmillan Trust. Is it Macmillan Trust? The the, the cancer uh, end of life support charity. And it's basically like people respect and appreciate that you're going out of your way to do something that not many people do. So I encourage people to do that as a first step. It's like, oh, wait, this fellow's going to die. Like, impending, impending death. I mean, at the time, you know, we're talking a handful of months. So you are literally counting down the days. I didn't know if I was going to, my intention was to break it um, on Christmas Day, have a glass of wine on Christmas Day. This was before I embraced Islam. And it was uncertain whether or not he would still be alive around that time. So it was kind of this thing of, will the next time I drink, will this gentleman be alive? And so I think that doing it for charity, doing it for others is something very powerful. And I think to end the video here, to conclude, one of the biggest things is a realization that you have more control than you realize. Maybe you're going to have to change your friendship group, at least those who you associate with on a regular and intimate basis. Because if your friendship is built upon smoking weed, sniffing drugs, drinking alcohol, then you know, you probably are going to break away from those people if you want to stop doing that thing. And that's fine. If you want to develop and grow and start your relationship with God, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and look to get married and have children and develop in your employment, you know, your, your career, so to speak, earn more money, save, saving money, guys. I mean, you can save, you can become rich by just putting the money you spend on drink and drugs into an ISA. You do that for 30 years, you're a millionaire. You know what I mean? You can retire off that. So we have choices in our hands, but some of them may well be not easy. They may present some difficulty to the pressure from your family and friends. For me, I was always a kind of all or nothing guy. Well, alhamdulillah. For me, I always knew that to stop sniffing, smoking, drinking, it would have to be a kind of a clean cut you know, a, a, a clean pull away, like when you have to pull the bandaid off your skin and it takes the hair with it. I didn't want to do it slowly. I didn't want to leave any room for returning to this lifestyle on a regular basis. So I knew that I was going to stop smoking and drinking and sniffing and all these kind of things that are commonplace, commonplace nowadays, just as much as fornication. And so to, to wrap up the video, what I did to stop drinking alcohol, and this was before I embraced Islam, but it certainly made it easier, is I really focused on others. Can I raise some money for a good cause? And mortality realized that do I really want to be slave to my emotions and desires overtaking me, having to go and spend my money, the last of my money, on cigarettes and alcohol and this and that and this whole scrambling for a high or do I want to regain control and independence and be able to kind of overcome these base desires I do right so the charity the starting your relationship with God which is fundamental to actually if you look at you know the, the foundational AA doctrine it's to realize 
what we have control over and what we don't. And to realize that actually the vast majority we don't. And that comes from God. And to reestablish or yeah, reestablish relationships that you have to set boundaries and parameters. Because if you don't do that, then you live by somebody else's boundaries and parameters. And people respect it at the end of the day when you draw your lines and you say, this is what I'm doing. This is where I am. And at first they'll challenge it. And at first they might laugh. And at first they might feel like it's a phase. But as 1,000 days goes by, as the months and years and what will become decades after three and four and 5,000 days, people start to realize that this is the real deal. And they now look to you uh, for advice and support because you're a, a pillar of stability when they are still struggling with the existential crisis, the, the instability emotionally, uh, it may be even financially, spending sprees and spending money on absolutely nothingness rather than thinking about guaranteed long-term solutions. Look, we all love crypto, guys. We all love a, a quick money back guarantee, although crypto, of course, is no guarantee. But there are guaranteed ways. Like I say, you put the money you spend on going out, drinking drugs into a basic ISA into the S&P 500, then you fast forward 30 years, you're a millionaire. Simple as that. So financially, spiritually, relationship wise, interpersonally, everything physically, we've not even mentioned that just that the vitality hangovers, what a waste of time to get over something that is not even that fun. Alcohol is not that great, guys. It's not as good as Salah. It's not as good as praying to Allah, the peace, the tranquility, the serenity, everything you give up. For the sake of Allah, he replaces it with something better. Giving up alcohol, the original intention was not actually for Allah. But then when I embraced Islam and I, you know, I had planned to return uh, to alcohol. I'd done many times stints. I'm going to end it here because I'm going to go get a drink before I pray. But something not, not, not a bevy, obviously, a drink of uh, a soft drink. <laughs> Um, something that I'd done many times before uh, at uni during my university years, in fact, which are obviously which is pretty much one big booze up, was I stopped drinking for, it was twice I did it, for over six months because I was preparing for a competition. Both of them were powerlifting competitions. And so, you know, run a marathon. What I've done since I've stopped drinking, I, I've picked up long distance running. I ran the London Marathon a handful of weeks ago. I've Today, I signed up for my first ultra marathon. Inshallah, Allah allows me to make it to the race. It's the it's a 50 kilometer race. The marathon is 42 kilometers. This is 50 kilometers in miles. A marathon is 26 and this is 31. So it's an extra uh, small segment, but it's about for me right now, kind of going a little bit longer each time and training harder to go quicker as well. You know, if I can do, my marathon time wasn't great. I did it in six hours, but if I can run an extra eight kilometers in under six hours. That would be a huge achievement. And Ramadan was just before the marathon. I didn't run for literally six weeks before I, I did the marathon. And I know you're supposed to taper off, but not quite to that extent, not just completely drop training altogether. And even before that, I was just doing the odd 5k, 10k. I wasn't really pushing myself to get those longer mileages under my belt. And so physically as well, that just comes to mind. I mean, like say, Start going to the gym, drinking water, transformation season, be an inspiration to your family. Like I say, financially, spiritually, physically, emotionally, be the person people turn to, or at least the people start going, oh, he's doing something different. And as time unfolds and people struggle, they will come to you as I've had, alhamdulillah, people kind of inquire because they see I'm in good spirits and you can't do these videos on a regular basis. You can't build a community. You can't support people in real life and online. If you yourself are not doing well and mashallah, alhamdulillah, I'm on top of the world. You know, that's the classic English phrase. How are you doing? Not bad. All right. I like saying on top of the world, never been better. So this is me right now saying to you guys, big up.
your good selves. Peace and bless and lovings to everybody who is watching. If you've watched the video this far, then please like it and comment down below where you are watching from. Because I love to hear brothers from South America and Australia and Russia and Canada and from places all around the world. That just absolutely jacks me up. And let me know in the comment section, if you're still listening, how long it has been since you last drank alcohol and realize that it's secondary, it's second rate, it's, it's boring, it's just not even worth it, guys. The life, non-alcohol, is so much better anyway that why are we even doing this? It's culture, it's peer pressure, it's habit, it's just doing things for the sake of doing it. People respect somebody who stands by principles and is doing something for the betterment of themselves and their family to be stronger physically and spiritually and like I say, now being able to save and invest money for my son's future, for my family, where we're going to live, what, what we're going to do, where we're going to go. And not just think about the this evening, drowning my sorrows and wasting my money and also scuppering my potential. So that's how I did it. Let me know what you think. 1,000 days, no alcohol. And here is to a thousand days more. Bismillah. So thanks so much for listening. One last time. Always remember, you know what's coming if you watch the videos before. Big up, your good selves. Arrivederci. Until next time, good folk. Questa e la bella vita.